Hey guys, it's Karen. I'm going to do a quick market update. In this session, looking at the Bitcoin price action, we can, we can see how not much has changed. And looking from a macro point of view, we can see how we have this trend line here. First touch point here, second touch point here, and third one here. We actually broke below it. And as we say, when too many people are looking at the same thing, it's just, it's inevitable. But looking more at the recent price action, we have the support box here. And something that's actually come to attention particularly as I was speaking about in the Discord group as well how potentially we could be this beginning of this head and shoulder pattern so we've got this shoulder here head here and maybe we do get a push up maybe to 29k and maybe this could be a right shoulder and eventually then we could break down below uh, coming up to the halving so potentially if we do a measured move if, if we do break down so from this point to this point so, so to here so it goes around to 20k roughly 20 19.5k because if you take it from the head to the neckline and it's just a measured move i mean of course there's no guarantees it's going to happen immediately but it's just something that i am careful of i'm not a huge fan of shoulder patterns and general chart patterns but it's something to take you know you would want to consider but looking at this we can see there's a supply box here that's not been tapped yet it's just it's still unmitigated and so this is something else i'm looking at and of course looking at some high untapped points of controls and so these are essentially areas of high volume based on previous historic price action. And you can see here, so between 29.1 to 29.7k, these are untapped points of controls. And so I would expect potentially a push up here. And we'll see if that actually forms the right shoulder. And then if we then break down or we continue further up. Typically what happens is that leading up to just before the halving, there's usually a cool off, you know, perhaps... And then once it starts consolidating, leading then to the halving, usually there's a run up. Again, it's, it's, there's no 100% when a lot of people are focusing on the same thing, there's no guarantees. But this is just what historically has happened. We actually are below the weekly open as well because we opened at 27.9K and we've actually now done below. So it's just, let's see if we can at least reclaim the weekly open 27.9. If we lose the support box, then there's actually very little in the way really till this um, demand zone here around 22.6 because this is actually an area an imbalance region so this imbalance has not been completely filled especially in the weekly and it has been looming for a while and again with these technical indicators and aspects you can never predict exactly when it's going to happen but as traders we have a generally 70 to 80 percent probability and if you're successful and that's just a game of probabilities really and so as long as we hold above the support box it's still bullish until proven otherwise but once it breaks down which is, is still fairly likely then again there's very little on the way to here and as i was saying before it's essentially two separate channels here so this is one channel here range bound between 25.4 and 31.2 and then once we broke if we break down below then that's a separate channel so from 15.5 to here it's just a range bound and this is just an environment that's where it, Looking at the SPX, so S&P 500 index, we're still holding that 4.3K weekly level. And so if we lose that, then that could be very serious, but we're still actually holding that, which is good so far. And looking at some other markets. So looking at the wider markets, kicking it off at the S&P 500 index, we're actually still holding that 4.3K level. And if we lose that, that could be a really bad sign, really. But looking at this in the lower time frames, it has been a four or down trend. We've actually taken and taken this low out, so it could be a potential change in character. And so th this is still a down trend. Then looking, of course, at the US 100, so at NASDAQ, from a weekly point of view, we're, we're still holding above this 4.4K level. And it is still a down trend. We've taken out these lows. And because of this dump here, and we'll protect, we're just recovering some imbalances. So the trend is downwards for a lot of the indexes, under proven otherwise. Dixie, actually, let's have a look as well with this. We can see how I've drawn this uh, channel from going back from decades, and you can see how we're still above this low point of this channel. So you can see how particularly in this four, this is a four uptrend we've we've drawn up here. We've actually taken out these highs. So if we actually hold this, this was actually resistance here. So we hold above this, we could be flipping this pre prior resistance into support. And maybe we can have a leg up further. So let's see how that really affects risk on assets. Then of course the VIX, the VIX, and I called this a long time ago. We, we were actually at historic lows here. We actually were, went about down below the 2021, almost to the 2020, 2019 lows, but we slightly front round these. And I expected a bounce, so that was a long trade. So congratulations to all those that took it. That's what happened here. Then the US 30 
index of Dow Jones, we are still looking at the weekly level. We still we have this trend line coming down like this. I'm not a huge fan of trend lines, but sometimes I look at them. But this is also a downtrend. So it seems that a lot of indices are actually forming very, very similar patterns. And also if you draw Fibonacci actually from here. So also, if you draw Fibonacci as well, it's very similar because a lot of these indices actually tap the 786 Fibonacci, but then slightly front ran the 886 Fibonacci. And then we actually had a retracement now. So this is very similar. We spoke about SPX, US 100, all of them slightly front ran the 886, a similar pattern here. Looking at gold as well, we spoke about this, how this was a triple top here. And of course, we could get still get a breakout. It's still possible in, later on. But we've actually, this was essentially forming a wedge. So like compression, then we broke down below it. Because uh, we were speaking about how, and again, this could still be a deviation play. Sometimes, you know, you have a deviation like this, and we go back in, and we pop back out like that, and then we go back to the top again. So this is something else that is interesting what's happening. So I wouldn't rely too much. Yes, we've broken below, but sometimes a lot of these fake outs happen when a lot of people are actually focusing on the same thing. But guys, thanks a lot for watching. Do like and subscribe. And of course, put down specific video requests in the comment section below. And I'll be more than happy to make videos on such requested topics.